Hello, my name is Jessica, and I'm a member of the Technical Services team at Oxford Nanopore Technologies. In this masterclass, we will be discussing how to base call and detect methylation. We invite you to join us for each masterclass in the series, where we will provide guidance on how to prepare, sequence, and analyze. This masterclass is one of two in the series focused on data analysis. Here we will provide an introduction into analyzing nanopore sequencing data, base calling, file formats, detecting methylation, and review related case studies and resources. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the process of how we go about investigating our sequence data by learning more about base calling. As many of you have seen demonstrated in the other master classes in this series, this slide demonstrates how nanopore sequencing works. As molecules translocate through the pores, they create characteristic disruptions in the ionic current to produce raw squiggle data that can be base called into FAST5 and FASTQ files for further analysis. Understanding this mechanism is key to further unlocking the potential applications of working with this sequencing data particularly when sequencing native molecules. Raw read accuracy has been steadily increasing over the years, following multiple improvements in base calling algorithms, kit chemistry, and pore chemistry. The progression from the early adopted transducer model to current Bonito CRF models has contributed to improvements on the modal accuracy from around 90% to over 99% in just two years. Raw read accuracy is usually denoted by percentage. For example, 99% accuracy means that 99 bases out of 100 in a read were called correctly. At ONT, we continue to strive for improvement to aid in scientific discoveries, which contributed to the recent release of the R10.4.1 pore chemistry and the Q20 kit chemistry, which is capable of producing a 99.2% raw modal accuracy for simplex reads. As reviewed in an earlier master class, the latest kit chemistry enables a high capture rate with reduced library input. This in turn contributes to a higher percentage of complementary strands being sequenced. Combining data from both strands using our latest duplex base caller lends to even further improvements in raw read accuracy. This in combination with our three base calling models seen here, FAST, HACK, and SOUP, continue to demonstrate improvements in accuracy. We recommend reviewing the accuracy page on the community or our data analysis technical document for up-to-date information. Base calling is the computational process of converting the raw electrical signal from the FAST5 or latest POT5 files generated during sequencing into the nucleotide sequence which is output in the FASTQ file format. And with use of nanopore software, Additional features can be incorporated as well to include demultiplexing and alignment when performing base calling either live or post-run. A FAST5 file is a type of HDF5 file, which is designed to contain all information needed for analyzing nanopore sequencing data and tracking it back to its source. FAST5 files contain raw sequencing data for each read with logical groupings of related information and two major types of objects, datasets, and groups. These groups contain one subgroup for each main step in the analysis. Within each of these subgroups are key value pairs stored as attributes that provide useful details about the outcome of that analysis step, with information such as mean Q-score and sequence length. To aid in reducing disk space needed for storing these files, VBZ compression is enabled by default in Minnow. To further aid in reducing the disk space needed for storing the raw data files produced from sequencing, our teams have developed a new POD5 file. The GitHub page linked here provides a tool to convert previously generated FAST5 files into the latest POD5 file format, should users want to reduce current disk utilization of stored FAST5 files. This new file format not only reduces the storage space needed, but also lends to improved read and write performance. This, in turn, contributes to less computational resources needed when processing this data. 
the latest standalone Guppy software is enabled to use either FAST5 or POD5 files as input for base calling. Updates on when this latest file format will be integrated into the Minnow software will be provided on the community. Whether you use FAST5 or POD5 files as input for base calling, the output file will still be a FASTQ file format. FASTQ files are a standard large text file with a line for each read starting with an at sign label, followed by the read ID, run ID, and sample ID, with the latest update to this file format including the base calling model used to generate the data. The information that follows includes the sequence and per base quality information, such as Q scores, which are represented as American Standard Code for Information Interchange Characters, which is a character encoding standard used for most electronic communication. Bioinformatics includes a collection of multiple steps and data requirements will place demands on each stage of the pipeline. It's important to start thinking about what kind of read links you might want to keep and which ones you might want to exclude. The same applies for read quality and coverage. For example, if you want to call in phase methylation, then longer reads are preferred. In general, this is what most bioinformatic pipelines will look like. We start with raw reads in FASTQ format, perform a QC assessment with filtering, and subsequently map that data to a reference. We can then use that mapping to detect a particular event, for example, an indel or a structural variation, and hopefully get some results which we can put into a readable format and publish. And remember, bioinformatics is all about file formats, with file format inputs for a specific step of the pipeline, dictating output from the previous stage of a pipeline, and so on. Analysis Platforms ONT offers analysis solutions for a range of applications, with many of these solutions being well-suited for even those who are new to bioinformatics. Feedback from community members over the years has driven the development of commonly used analysis workflows into intuitive gra graphic user interface software such as Minnow, Epitome, and Epitome Labs. These solutions continue to provide the best practice of latest analysis tools in a pre-configured format that is fully supported by our teams. Those with more expertise in command line can take advantage of the latest tools and algorithms available on GitHub as well as utilizing our user-designed command line tools or creating their own analysis tools. We recommend reviewing the community for the latest updates on analysis solutions. In this masterclass, we will be focusing on the fully supported solutions available in a user-friendly graphical user interface. For additional guidance on analysis solutions, we invite you to tune into the next masterclass in the series, How to Generate Assemblies and Call Variants. Here we see a general overview of Minnow utilization. Minnow software functions to control the sequencing device and offers many real-time analysis solutions. When starting a sequencing run, users are able to incorporate a variety of features in parallel, such as real-time base calling, methylation detection, barcode demultiplexing, alignment, and adaptive sampling, a computational targeted sequencing approach. Sequencing and analysis performance are reported in real time using quality control metrics. The ability to monitor a run offers the user more control over their sequencing run and flow cell utilization. A report containing these run metrics is automatically exported at the end of the run. Minno software enables the use of live base calling, where the distinctive change in the ionic current, also known as raw squiggle data, is converted into nucleotide sequence. When starting a run with base calling enabled, you will not only be able to take advantage of our standard fast, high, and super accuracy base calling models, but also the option to detect certain types of modified bases, for example, 5-methyl-C, when using native methods for library preparation and enabling the modified base calling option. When deciding on which base calling model to use, Consider the computational resources available on the device or computer used to run the Minnow software. While the SOUP model offers the highest raw read accuracy, this is due to utilization of a more computationally intensive architecture, which can lend to base calling requiring more time to complete after sequencing run is ended. 
for applications where time to answer is critical, we recommend the fast base calling model. Minnow also offers a post-run base calling solution should you wish to rebase call your data using a different model. A ground truth or truth dataset is required to train a model for base calling. Those interested in the process will find the model training in Remora to be further simplified over previously available tools, a factor that has enabled ONT to release more robust models with recent software updates. Innovations in model training have resulted in the incorporation of Remora into the Minnow software as a lightweight, modified base calling solution that can run alongside standard FAST, HACK, and SOOP base calling models. These models currently support the detection and annotation of 5-methyl-C and 5-hydroxymethyl-C in a CPG context, producing a BAM file as output. Once your sequencing experiment has started, Minnow will begin producing a number of graphs and plots, which can be used to assess the quality of your run. As the quality of your data will determine what is feasible for downstream analysis, quality control is fundamental. With this in mind, our teams have enabled the ability to monitor these metrics directly on the device or remotely using a network computer, tablet, or phone with Minnow installed. Once the desired throughput is achieved, a run can then be stopped directly on the device or from the comfort of your home using the Minnow phone app. The Minnow manual found on the community documentation page provides guidance to aid in installation, navigation of software features, how to start and monitor a sequencing run, and performing post-run analysis. Minnow software offers a wide range of features and analysis solutions, either in real time or post-run with new features added each year to further reduce the time needed to answer your biological questions. For applications requiring analysis beyond the offerings available in Minnow, we offer another real-time, user-friendly solution through Epitome. Epitome is a scalable and reproducible cloud-based platform for analysis of your data. With ease of installation and simple pre-configured workflows that utilize current best practice and analysis tools, the Epitome Agent software is utilized for workflow selection, data upload, and provides real-time monitoring of your experiment. Epitome is available to community members as a fully supported analysis solution. Epitome can be started alongside your sequencing run. After starting the sequencing in Minnow, you will launch Epitome Agent, select a workflow, indicate the folder where the sequencing data is being generated, Start the workflow and observe as bioinformatics reports are generated in real time, which can be crucial when time to answer is critical, such as food and water surveillance. Epitome generates a shareable, interactive, and printable report, as well as other output files depending on the workflow selected. For a full list of available workflows and details on what is included in the analysis, we recommend navigating to the Epitome website. ONT provides a range of offerings to suit your needs, with options available for all levels of bioinformatics expertise. Whether that be a point-and-click cloud-based solution for real-time analysis with Epitome, or a more configurable local post run analysis option using Epitome Labs. While reporting is similar, Epitome Labs provides more details and output files. As Epitome Labs is a local analysis solution, more options for configuration are available giving you further control over your data. Each of these solutions are extensive, constantly maintained, updated, and added to, offering data analysis options for a wide range of applications. Epitome Labs can more easily implement new workflows based on community feedback, lending to a greater number of new workflows available in Epitome Labs compared to Epitome. For example, bacterial classification, SARS-CoV-2, human structural variation, and generic reference alignment are all available on both platforms, while other workflows such as influenza or monkeypox genome analysis are currently only available on Epitome Labs. Calling methylation. Nanopore shows a high correlation in methylation calling with the bisulfite method 
and even higher reproducibility, calling a higher percentage of CPGs in the human genome at lower read depth. Additionally, methylation calling with nanopore data is faster than with bisulfite sequencing, all of which lend to decreased cost and faster time to result. Accurate methylation calls can be achieved even at lower coverage. Nanopore data shows a greater depth of coverage uniformity after mapping and is far less affected by GC content of data compared to bisulfite sequencing, as the majority of nanopore data maps to the genome. RNA modifications can also be detected when using the direct RNA sequencing method, which is unique to ONT. These modifications may alter RNA function, some are associated with disease, and many are still to be explored. More information on this can be found in our epigenetics application page and in our resource center. Both hypermethylation and hypomethylation of 5-methyl-C at CPG dinucleotides have been shown to be associated with diseases. With nanopore technology, such differential methylation can be identified and phased into haplotypes with nucleotide level precision. Native DNA sequencing with the ligation kit is capable of producing megabase sized phase blocks, while use of the ultralong kit lends to chromosome arm phasing, providing easy detection of methylation differences between haplotypes, which is useful for applications such as gene imprinting. While there are many options available for visualizing methylation data, such as methplotlib and pycometh, as methylation calling information is written directly to BAM files, more tools like IGV have integrated features to visualize modified base data. This is useful because it means you can visualize methylation tracks using standard sequencing data software, which many are already familiar with. In order to generate data for methylation detection, native PCR-free methods are required. However, targeted approaches may be of interest for certain applications. For this, ONT offers PCR-free targeted sequencing options, including an option that does not require additional time at the bench. With adaptive sampling, the whole DNA library is prepared for sequencing, without any amplification or enrichment steps. The sample is then added to the flow cell, and the sequencing run is set up in MINNOW with the adaptive sampling feature enabled. With real-time base calling, it is possible to identify whether a sequence represents a region of interest as the DNA strand passes through the nanopore. This is achieved through, this, through the rapid mapping of the beginning of the sequence strand to the provided reference. If the sequence lies within a target to be enriched, or is not a sequence to be depleted, it is allowed by the software to continue sequencing. If the sequence is not a target, or is to be depleted, the strand is selectively ejected from that nanopore, preventing further sequencing and freeing up the pore occupancy time for regions of interest. Key benefits of adaptive sampling include the ability to enrich regions inaccessible to traditional technologies, such as GC-rich regions intractable to PCR. This includes characterization of small to very large regions of interest, producing data that is information-rich consisting of SNPs or SV information and methylation as we are sequencing natively. Not to mention the benefits of real-time base calling providing rapid access to your results. You can stop base calling when a target of interest has been sufficiently enriched. There is growing interest in methylation and its potential to be used as a biomarker for identification or characterization of many cancer types. This means there is need for a robust, targeted methylation detection solution. For this, our teams have developed Reduced Representation Methylation Sequencing, or RRMS. RRMS uses a combination of adaptive sampling to enrich for regions of interest and in sequencing of native DNA for methylation detection using the Remora tool incorporated into the MINNO software. This method captures all CPG islands, shores, and shells, all without any special library preparation. When comparing this to reduced representation bisulfite sequencing, or RRBS, you can certainly appreciate the time saved at the bench, but beyond saving preparation time, you also gain the benefit of a higher proportion of on-target reads and highly reproducible results with RRMS versus RRBS. 
Epitome Labs offers a single workflow to investigate human genomic variation, including structural nucleotide variations, structural variations, and methylation. DNA is sequenced with live and modified base calling enabled, along with alignment to the human genome. The resulting BAM file data is then used in the Epitome Labs WF human variation workflow, producing annotations for methylation and variants with more details on this workflow provided on GitHub. And now to close this masterclass by reviewing a relevant case study and resources. Tobias Rausch and his team collaborated to evaluate the utility of Oxford Nanopore and reveal patterns of somatic structural variation. Childhood medulloblastoma samples were sequenced natively and analyzed using methods for characterizing structural variants and methylome patterns. Investigation of structural variants in cancer samples is of interest as they are the most common source of cancer driver mutations and outnumber point mutations for the generation of cancer drivers in the majority of common cancers. With many previously underexplored due to limitations in short read sequencing, whereas nanopore long reads can detect more structural variants by spanning regions inaccessible to short reads due to repetitive regions and complex re rearrangements. In this study, they reveal the fully assembled haplotype resolved structure of a complex chromothripsis event and further uncover a novel complex rearrangement pattern. By integrating genomic and epigenomic readouts, they performed haplotype resolved genome-wide analysis of CPG methylation. They associate a subset of the somatic DNA rearrangements with functional consequences and demonstrate the ability to explain aberrant gene expression patterns, such as allele-specific expression and gene fusions, by integrating genomic and epigenetic long read data, a level of discovery that was not possible with other short read sequencing technologies. In this masterclass, we reviewed how base calling can do more than produce nucleotide sequence when using native methods to prepare the library, the data has been enriched to include epigenetic information, such as modified bases, that can be detected using specific base calling models. To learn the latest about this application and more, we encourage you to review the wealth of resources available in the community and hope that you will join us for the next masterclass in this series to learn how to generate assemblies and call variants.